All right, the French Assembly voted yesterday by a margin of 335 to 1 to enact a ban that prevents women from wearing face covering veils in public. Now, the vote is further evidence of a growing sentiment in Europe that burqas, the head coverings worn by many Muslim women, are a sign of religious fanaticism and repression. Now, Belgium's lower house of parliament voted to institute a ban on the garments in April, and lawmakers in Germany and Denmark have also voiced support for such a law. But debate continues to raise. Rage over whether such measures are a form of religious discrimination or instead serve to protect the rights of women. Joining me now with reaction are the author of the book, They Must Be Stopped, Brigitte Gabriel, and from the Muslim Republic Affairs Council, Adina Lekovic is with us. Guys, welcome back. Thanks for being with us. Hi, Sean. Thanks Thank for having you. us on. All right. Uh, a lot of people are saying, Brigitte, this, may, this debate may be coming to America. Do you support this, this French Belgian ban? Uh, yes, I do support this French Belgian band, and here's why. We know that when we start seeing signs of burqa in a community, it shows a sign of the radicalization of that community and the disassimilation of that community into Western culture. We have seen that in France, for example, where the burqa, where we see mo more women in burqa, there are 725 no go zones where police cannot enter. We're seeing the same signs in Britain. And this is the reason why you are seeing in mm -hmm. European communities. Across Europe, 80% of the Europeans are against the, uh, the burqa because they are realizing that's where the homegrown terrorism is coming from because it's a sign that the Adina, men in that community are becoming more radicalized. Adina, how many women are actually forced under Sharia law, for example, to wear a burqa and cover and can't drive and can't go to school and can't be seen in public with men? How many? It, it's got to be a great fear of these countries that women, although not officially under Sharia law, maybe so in their own families. Well, let me say first that I'm pretty adamantly opposed to the burqa on Islamic grounds. It's not mandated anywhere in the Quran. It comes from certain cultures. And on that grounds, I'm against it. In the Quran, it just, it's just not there. But at the same time, I defend a woman's right to choose to wear one as a result but, of my Western but, principles but are they and democratic choosing it principles. Or are some women I don't know forced how, by their husbands there, to wear it. There may be some women who are forced, but in, in, in reality, and there is a New York Times story about this, a long, extensive one just a couple of weeks ago, the vast majority are choosing. Using it on their own. All right. so we can't. We if if we choose to if we if we want to uh, focus on how we can make it make a change that's meaningful. Um, we've got to think about how we integrate minority populations and immigrant populations. Right. By banning something, we only make it more popular. And the reality is that we have to support women's right to choose based on our Western not, principles. And that's where this is really counterproductive. I'm it's not, not sure about the many... burqa. It's a it's a misrepresentation to say that you know that that this, these are signs of radicalization. That's the the. I mean, that, that's just absurd. Right, let me bring up, there's a controversy. We have this controversial imam that wants to build this mosque at ground zero. He wants America to become more Sharia compliant. He even suggested American policies were an accessory to the crime of what happened on 9-11. All right. Big opposition to the building of this mosque at ground zero. There is a group that came out with an ad. In the ad, they, they call, they don't want the mosque built. CBS, NBC won't run their ad. Here's the ad they won't run. They want to build a monstrous 13-story mosque at Ground Zero. This ground is sacred. Where we weep, they rejoice. That mosque is a monument to their victory and an invitation for more. A mosque at Ground Zero must not stand. The political class says nothing. The politicians are doing nothing to stop it. But we Americans will be heard. Join the fight to kill the Ground Zero Mosque. Brigitte, I am more nervous because politicians, Mayor Bloomberg in New York, for example, they, they don't seem to have a problem with this, but they have not done their his, they have not done their research on this imam that wants Sharia law, America to be more Sharia compliant. His comments that he made after 9/11. Does that impact the decision of whether or not they should build it? And what do you think about the ad? 
uh, that should impact the decision as to why they, he, they should not build it. We have to remember also that the father of this imam was kicked out of Egypt because his involvement with the Muslim Brotherhood. He was in the Muslim Brotherhood with Ayman al-Zawahiri, the second man in charge of al-Qaeda. The father came to the United States in the 60s and set up an Islamic community in Manhattan funded by 49 Islamic countries, including Iran and Libya. The son is following in the same footsteps as the father. But what's the bigger issue, Sean, is that building a mosque at ground zero is a slap in the face to the families of 9-11 as well as the memories of the victims who died. And Americans are opposed to it across the nation. On our website, actforamerica.org, we have a petition Adina. to stop the mosque that has been signed by over 65,000 people. Adina, I'll give you a chance to respond. Yeah, th this mosque, you got to look at it in, in, from what the intention of the, of the folks who are creating this mosque is about. What it's about is pointing to and creating and promoting a, the exact opposite vision of Islam as the one that inspired the 9 11 hijackers. These wait, are wait, Muslim wait, wait, New Yorkers. Hold wait, wait, on, hang these on a are, second. These are, this these guy are Muslim is quoted, New Yorkers. I interviewed Rick Lazio no, yesterday. Hold on. The, these wait, 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 are Muslim no, no. New Quoted as saying. Uh, in September of 01 that American policies were an accessory to the crime of what happened. The, the, that's a statement that's totally taken out of context. You, you go and look at this man's Take website, read all his books. Read, no, read all this man's books. He wants books. America to the, be more Sharia the, compliant. Do you want America to move no, towards Sharia law? No, he does not law? want America to be more Sharia compliant. Yes, he does. This is he a man who supports American law and the Constitution. Yes, he does. This is this is a man in an organization, the Cordoba Initiative. If you check out their website, and you see what they're Excuse about. Excuse me, you are not in his record. own book. He there, wants no. America to be more Sharia compliant. You are not being straightforward no, with this they, audience. No, that's that's a mischaracterization. I have read that book. That's a mischaracterization. It is mis not a mischaracterization. That is not a mischaracterization. This mosque. He wants Hold to on. propose this, Sharia law, this mosque, which is the same no, law. This that mosque they, is a place where, where, where they want to create interreligious understanding, interreligious inter relations. They want to reject the kind of Islam that. Led to 9 11 right, and we promote a run. different vision behind. of Islam. And that's a positive move that we should no, be supporting. This, so this, rather than this, this man is and an extremist. Yeah, September 11 families for a peaceful tomorrow. Over 200 families have supported Not it. True. Absolutely true. All right, time to check in. Thank this you.